Well, friends, welcome to St. John's on this Sunday, the 1st of August, and our first uh, online service, which is uh, on YouTube. 
Uh, this service is sponsored by your local Parramatta LGA lockdown, the lockdown that is coming to get you. Consequently, we are not really here. This service is pre-recorded for your safety, but we can all still interact using the comments bar. So identify yourself. Let us know that you're here and say hello uh, to one another. We have a special lineup for you today. Today is More College Sunday. It's a special Sunday which we set aside particularly uh, to think about supporting and praying for More College, our theological college, which is so critical to uh, ministry of the gospel both here in Sydney and around the world. And Evan, uh, who is one of the fourth year students at More College, is going to be speaking to us in a few minutes from uh, 2 Timothy and chapter 2. Uh, a brilliant chapter for him to be uh, kicking off with here today. Now, I'd invite you, please, to uh, uh, pray with me and we bring ourselves before the Lord Jesus. Our Father in heaven, though we cannot meet in person, our unity is a spiritual unity. We meet together in the one Spirit and the one Lord, Jesus Christ. Help us to know the reality of your forgiveness our justification by the blood of Jesus, new birth and the hope of eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now, friends, we are going to sing a hymn that reminds us that our foundation, uh, our hope is Jesus himself, our rock and our defender.
so tired. I don't want to do it anymore. What? Why not? Come on, Susan. We're so close. This race to the finish line seems so hard. I don't want to do it anymore. Rip. Susan, someone passed you on the baton of good news and is relying on you to finish the race. Don't you remember? Look, give me, give me the baton that you were given. Yes, that one. Look, here. Let me read it out for you. Remember Jesus Christ. After Jesus died, he was raised from the dead. He destroyed death and showed us the way to life. God has given you grace in Jesus. Stay strong in that grace. I know it's hard, Susan, and it's tiring as well, but it won't be for nothing. Will there be something at the end? For sure. The glory is going to be so much better than any medal or prize in the world. Really? Will it be better than this fancy looking award thing that I got? <laughs> yes, it will be fancier than that. Aw, oh, thank you, Tina. Thank you for reminding me. Come on, let's finish let's the rest. Let's keep going. Let's come on, let's keep going. <sighs> <sighs> Hey boys and girls, when you have a lot of friends at school who don't know or love Jesus and you want to share Jesus with them. Sometimes it will be easy. Sometimes it will be hard. But remember what Paul said to Timothy. Therefore, I endure everything for the sake of the elect, that they too may obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. So boys and girls, will you keep running the race even when it's hard? G'day, Kanishka Rafal here. I wanted to take the opportunity to say thank you to the churches of the diocese for your prayers for Kaylee and me as we've stepped into this new role. We're very grateful of course, uh, due to the lockdown, we've had many cancellations. We haven't been able to uh, visit churches on a Sunday or attend other gatherings that have been planned. Like everyone else, we're looking forward to fellowship face to face. But of course, we realize that at the moment, it's so tough for so many people in our churches and across communities around the city. I'm so glad that in the midst of this, you're connecting with church today and often at other times during the week as well. I know ministers and ministry teams, paid and volunteers, service leaders, musos, tech people are working so hard to make sure that we can hear the word of God together each week. What a gift that is, that we can sing in our own homes, strong and in my case, slightly flat, but we can bow in prayer together and seek the Lord who knows us and sees us and loves us and hears us. It's an important time to remember the promises of our Saviour who loved us and gave himself for us. Wherever two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of you. Upon this rock I will build my church and nothing will prevail against her. Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Jesus has not left us alone. We have his word, we have his spirit, and we have each other. I'm so glad you're at church today. I know that very many of you are keeping in touch with fellow members of your church or Bible study and reaching out to your neighbours as well or others you know across the city with phone calls and Zoom catch-ups as exercise buddies, practically helping out with shopping or in whatever way restrictions allow. That has to be a pandemic silver lining and I thank God for it. What local churches are doing in this time is beautiful and your Father in Heaven sees it. 
Please continue in prayer for those in authority, those leading your church, those working so hard to keep our community safe for everyone. Pray for those who are suffering, who are anxious or alone. If you need to, reach out to a friend, to your church, to Anglicare. God is not on mute. Jesus is not locked down. The Spirit is with us. His Word is not chained. I hope you're encouraged in your time together today. And I'm praying that as we continue together through this testing time, God will grow us in faith and love and hope. God bless you. Well, friends, I did promise you that uh, you would get to meet Evan. And uh, so I've got Evan standing with me now. Evan's going to be speaking just in a few minutes from the little letter of 2 Timothy in chapter 2. Now, Evan, uh, you're married to the beautiful Eliza. You've got one son, Asher, 18 months. You're in fourth year at Moore College. That's right. Getting to be senior there. <laughs> uh, I've got a few questions for you, particularly about life in Moore College. Yeah. So let's kick off with this one. What things came together that you actually wanted to go to Moore College? Yeah, I was doing an apprenticeship uh, similar to the MTSs uh, here at St. John's. Uh, I was doing that at my uh, old church. And uh, I loved telling people about Jesus. Uh, I still do. And one of the things that I really wanted to be able to do is do it well and, um, and be able to answer tricky questions and just be better equipped at, at uh, telling people about Jesus. And so uh, having done MTS, I thought uh, the next step is, is probably to go to college. I think this is where uh, the Lord wants me to go. And so, um, yeah, we ended up applying and Eliza and I did first year together as well. And it was, um, yeah, one of the great joys. Great. I'm so pleased that you did. Uh, now, um, one of the great joys and experiences of college is actually the community life. Uh, more colleges very much centred and focused around that. Uh, what's your experience of that community been? Yeah, it's been brilliant. Um, so Eliza and I, we live at Moore West, which is just over the Parramatta River. Uh, we live in a college community there. Uh, it's brilliant. We have a resident baker who bakes amazing sweet goods all the time. Um, and that's one of the great joys of college community. But uh, the other great joys is that uh, it really is uh, iron sharpening iron throughout college life. And so, uh, yeah, you're able to bounce ideas off one another. You're keeping each other accountable in your Christian life. And uh, people think about things that you might not have. And uh, it just encourages you to get into God's Word and think about okay, it. Okay, so while we're talking about iron sharpening iron, uh, what have, what's been one of the highlights of, of your learning at Moore College? Yeah, uh, one of the great highlights of college is uh, I went in with uh, an idea of who I thought God was, uh, who I thought Jesus was, who I thought the Spirit was, and what uh, college has done, uh, and the community as well, is that it's helped me to take this small God who I once uh, thought about and just made him big and amazing and huge. And uh, I had... Uh, I'm so thankful for all the things that we've learned uh, because uh, this great big God, a mighty God, has created us uh, and wants to have a relationship with us. And it's just, uh, uh, it blows me away every time I think about it, uh, just how great and, uh, yeah, awesome he is. I th that's an awesome vision. Uh, thank you for sharing that with us. Now, uh, looking forward for you and Eliza, what are your hopes for uh, the coming years? Yeah, um, coming to the end of fourth year now, so on the home stretch, uh, we're looking at uh, serving in a parish somewhere in Sydney over the next couple of years, and um, we'll see what happens. We're, we're open to anything really after that. Um, yeah, the idea is to stay in Sydney just to get a bit more training and a bit more uh, experience under the belt uh, before heading out and... Um, who knows where that could be? God knows, and uh, we, have to, we have to find comfort in that, and we do. Awesome. Now, tell us why you think more college is important. Yeah, um, more college is, is amazing in terms of uh, helping people to shape their uh, understanding of who God is, uh, training people up, equipping them to go out and share the gospel. Uh, and we might think that that's just to Sydney, but th uh, that's to the world. So there are people in uh, my year group who are going to corners of the globe which you wouldn't think about um, and people in all across uh, college and so uh, there are people everywhere uh, who have been trained up through college who are sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ at the moment and um, that's a great thing that college is doing and uh, 
that's a, you don't have to want to go into ministry uh, to be able to go there. Um, yeah, you can get a great understanding to uh, be able to go back and help your local church as well. Uh, and um, yeah, it's a, it's a brilliant um, opportunity to learn. Okay, thank you for that. Um, societas. Just tell us what Societas is. Yeah, uh, you did ask me to mention that and I had forgotten. Uh, Societas is uh, a magazine that has all of the graduates that you can be praying for, prayer points, uh, what they're up to in life. Is there a nice picture of you and Eliza in there and Asha? There is a nice picture of Eliza and Asha, yes. Uh, <laughs> and uh, uh, You can be praying for those people and there's articles about what's going on in college life and um, people uh, have a few spotlights on themselves and, and um, yeah, what they've learned through college, what they're looking forward to, all that sort of thing. And people can get it by? Jumping on the line, <laughs> There's, there'll be a link in the Cathedral News, uh, which will be sent out uh, next week. So Good. keep an eye out for it. Good on you, Evan. Now I'm going to uh, pray for uh, Evan and uh, ask you to just to pray with me. Our Father in heaven, our Lord Jesus himself appeared to the Apostle Paul, who has now passed on the pattern of sound teaching to us in your word. Uh, help us to follow that pattern of sound words with faith and love in Jesus Christ. And Father, please be with Evan as he prepares himself for a lifetime of teaching that same pattern. Grant that he would always be faithful and true to it and bold, never ashamed of the gospel and of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank, well, thank you. you very much. Good on you, Evan. My name is Jason, I'm a fourth year uh, Moore College student. Yeah, so I was working at the local council before uh, starting at college. Yeah, I really enjoyed that work. It was kind of being involved with contributing to local infrastructure that was doing such good work. But I think the thing that I kept noticing was everything I was doing was temporary. Uh, things I would contribute to in one year might not be there four years down the track. But as I was getting involved with ministry at church, I think the thing I noticed was the work we were doing was eternal. It was about people coming to faith in Jesus and being part of his eternal kingdom or people growing in their faith. And so I think as I came to kind of notice that difference between temporary work and eternal work, yeah, I grew my conviction of wanting to be prepared to do a lifetime of that work. So I think college has uh, helped prepare me for this kind of work in two ways. I think one was just how it shaped me in my character. I came to college expecting a lot of academic study and but what I wasn't expecting is how much time I would spend with people. You know, my chaplains at college, my lecturers, having lunch with people, uh, sitting under God's word at chapel. And all of these things uh, God was using to grow me in love for people and grow me in, in kind of humble uh, service of uh, the people I was serving in my student ministry, just shaping my character to be someone who, yeah, more willing to lay down his life for other people and kind of dealing with sin and modeling that. And then the second way is, uh, yeah, college, kind of the courses just train me to be good at the main thing that I'll be doing, which is teaching the Bible. Everything kind of we've done at college, whether it's uh, languages like Greek and Hebrew or biblical study subjects, philosophy, church history, all of it is about learning to teach the Bible better so that you can help people in the local church to grow uh, in their love and knowledge of God. Where I see myself is serving in the local church, helping to build people up in faith uh, and help bring new people to faith in Jesus in the local church. So will you pray for me as I uh, head out into the local church here in Sydney and involved with kind of reaching people from all different nations and look to be part of building God's church. Good morning, St. John's. I'm Roger Gallagher, a member of our 5pm congregation. Today, we'll be praying for the pandemic, for the parents of St. John's, for all of us to be involved in including new people in our church, and as it's More College Sunday, we'll be praying for More College. We'll then finish with the collect for today and the Lord's Prayer. Please bow your heads and join me. Lord, we beg you to hear our prayers for help at this time of pandemic. For this virus has humbled our proud city. All our wisdom and effort has failed to stop its spread. And we feel despair. 
Lord, though we are but miserable sinners, please deliver us. Give wisdom to those in authority, strength and skill to all who minister to the sick, and grant that as we perceive how frail and uncertain our life is, we and many others in this city may realise that our only hope is in the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Heavenly Father, we pray for the parents of St. John's. Help them to be good models of Christian faith to their children. May their walk and talk both bring honour to you. And we pray that they may actively disciple their kids through reading the Bible and praying together, so that the gospel may be passed down to a new generation. Lord, even though we are confined to our homes, Help us to trust you when you say that your word is not chained and that every member of St. John's would work to include new people in our church, just as Christ has included us in your family. Help us to be welcoming, to be inviting, to show genuine interest and concern for others, that we might show forth your love and people turn and praise your name as a result. And Father, on this small college Sunday, we thank you for your faithfulness to the college throughout its life. We thank you for the faithful teachers on the college faculty, for meeting the needs of the college during the disruption of the past two years. We thank you for the army of men and women who pray for more. And especially we thank you for answering their prayers and raising up a large first year for 2021 which includes two former members of St. John's. We pray that the college might remain faithful and effective in training people to teach and live the gospel, that it might maintain a global gospel vision, that you may raise up many to take the gospel to a needy world, and that many of these would come and train at Moore College for that work. Amen. Please join me in the collect for today. Raise up your great power, Lord, and come among us to save us, that although through our sins we are grievously hindered in running the race that is set before us, your plentiful grace and mercy may speedily help and deliver us through the sufficiency of your Son, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honour and glory now and forever. Amen. And please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Hi everyone, my name is Calista and I go to 5pm. Today's reading comes from 2 Timothy 2 verses 14 to 26. Keep reminding God's people of these things. Warn them before God against quarrelling about words. It is of no value and only ruins those who listen. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who does not need to be ashamed and who correctly handles a word of truth. Avoid godless chatter, because those who indulge in it will become more and more ungodly. Their teaching will spread like gangrene. Among them are Hymenaeus and Philetus, who have departed from the truth. They say that the resurrection has already taken place and they destroy the faith of some. Nevertheless, God's solid foundation stands firm, sealed with this inscription. The Lord knows those who are his, and everyone who confesses the name of the Lord must turn away from wickedness. In a large house, there are articles not only of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay, some are for special purposes and some for common use. Those who cleanse themselves from the latter will be instruments for special purposes, made holy, useful to the master, and prepared to do any good work. Flee the evil desires of youth and pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace along with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. 
don't have anything to do with foolish and stupid arguments, because you know they produce quarrels. And the Lord's servant must not be quarrelsome, but must be kind to everyone, able to teach, not resentful. Opponents must be gently instructed, in the hope that God will grant them repentance, leading them to a knowledge of the truth, and that they will come to their senses and escape from the trap of the devil, who has taken them captive to do his will. Uh, thanks once again for having me, St. John's. It's a pleasure to be able to bring God's Word to you. Uh, how about I pray again as we uh, think about this passage? Dear loving Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your Word. Uh, we thank you that it speaks to us here today. Uh, Lord, we pray that you would be helping us to engage with it, uh, clear our minds of distractions. And Lord, we ask that we would gain a clearer understanding of who you are, and who we are through this passage as well. And we pray this in your name. Amen. In most of life, we're seeking approval, aren't we? Uh, whether it's from a boss, a coworker, perhaps even someone here at church. Uh, we're seeking approval. And then uh, we even give our own approval to different people as well. Uh, we have a, a favorite cashier uh, at the shops. We might have a specific doctor that we like to go and see, or even our favorite barber. Uh, I definitely have a favorite barber, and uh, Michael, I am missing you dearly. Uh, he got my approval because he cut my hair just the way I like it. And uh, we have our own approval. We seek approval from others, but it's fleeting. It can be won and lost very quickly. And as a worker, you're always trying to seek the approval. You want the approval of the one who's higher up. And the passage we're looking at today, uh, we will see what it means to be a worker for God and what it means to have God's approval for the way we work for Him. In the book of 2 Timothy, uh, the passage we're reading today and we're looking at today, uh, we have put our faith in Jesus, meaning... God has declared us righteous. In that sense, we already have God's approval. Uh, that's justification. It's being declared righteous by God. But this passage is about someone who has already been justified uh, and how they can find God's approval uh, and how they can use the gifts that God has given them. This is not about salvation because uh, we are saved by faith apart from our works. But this is about pleasing God by uh, serving Him. And it's not exclusive to Timothy either, or the full-time workers of St. John's. Uh, but it's for all who are saved. We're going to look at the worker approved by God, and we're going to look at uh, it in three sections. Uh, the worker correctly handles truth, the worker's life, and the worker teaches. Let's pick it up together in verse 14 of chapter 2. The worker correctly handles truth. And it's seen in two ways. Uh, they handle the truth, uh, they handle the word of truth, and they avoid godless arguments and chatter. Verse 14 says, Keep reminding God's people of these things. Warn them before God against quarreling about words. It is of no value and only ruins those who listen. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who does not need to be ashamed and who correctly handles the word of truth. Paul is continuing in his letter and he's giving these direct commands to Timothy. Uh, they are commands on how he'd like to see the word progress in the church Timothy is heading up. And Paul is urging Timothy to continue to encourage the people of God. Now, the kind of quarreling that can be seen in these verses, oh, it can seem unimportant and mundane, but have no importance at all. Uh, but it is incredibly important as it causes people to leave the faith. And Paul continues to encourage his brother, like the cheerleader on the sidelines, do your best, Timothy. Keep going as an approved worker of God, uh, cheering Timothy on to do his ministry well. Uh, what does it look like, though, uh, to be a worker of Christ. Well, firstly, they are unashamed of their standing with God. And secondly, they correctly handle the word of truth. 
Paul says in chapter 1, verse 12, uh, yet this is no cause for shame because I know whom I believed and I am convinced that he is able to guard what I have entrusted to him until that day. Uh, Paul is unashamed and he wants Timothy to be unashamed as well. Uh, It's about being convinced of what you are proclaiming and the fact that it is true. That is what helps people to stand firm in their faith and stand up for uh, for that faith when uh, there is trouble. And that's what Paul is urging Timothy to do here. Stand up for the gospel and proclaim it proudly because you are an approved worker of God. So the approved worker of God stands up for truth. Secondly, uh, they must teach and apply the Word of God along a straight path. Uh, Like a motorway that leads from point A to point B, there aren't any sharp bends or intersections that they have to stop at along the way. Uh, This means that the worker seeks to correctly handle the Word of truth without being turned aside by debates or sinful talk. Uh, That's what incorrectly handling the truth looks like. And Paul, he'll go on to say that all of Scripture is God-breathed. That is the truth that Timothy is to handle. The gospel is part of that truth, and it's used for teaching, correcting, and training in righteousness. It's all of Scripture that's been passed down through generations, and it holds up because it is truth. That's why it's important for Timothy to handle it correctly and not play around with it. The worker of God makes the truth plain. He doesn't add any twists or turns along the way, but makes a clear direction to get from point A to point B. Well, point A is where you stand today, and point B is being a knowledge of the truth and being equipped for God's service. However, uh, the people uh, around the worker can be swayed by quarreling and godless chatter. Did you see the example in verse 16? Let's read it together. Avoid godless chatter, because those who indulge in it will become more and more ungodly. Their teaching will spread like gangrene. Among them are Hymenaeus and Philetus, who have departed from the truth. They say that the resurrection has already taken place, and they destroy the faith of some. Now, Hymenaeus and Philetus are names given. These two have been preaching something that goes against the truth that Paul has been speaking about. Uh, They're distorting the truth and bringing something else into the church. They say that Jesus has already returned, that the resurrection of Christ has already happened. Uh, This goes completely against the truth, and it shows how incorrectly they've been handling it. Uh, What they taught about the resurrection was misguided. And Hymenaeus has been mentioned by Paul in his first letter as one who has been handed over to Satan for blasphemy. That helps us understand what kind of teaching Hymenaeus was doing, and uh, Philetus as well. But Paul gives us this great reminder in verse 19. Verse 19, Nevertheless, God's solid foundation stands firm, sealed with this inscription, The Lord knows who are His, And everyone who confesses the name of the Lord must turn away from wickedness. But the Lord knows who are His. Those who have their foundation in truth will never be shaken because the Lord knows them personally and has them firmly in His hands. As wickedness presents itself, God helps the one who confesses His name, Christ's name, and helps them to push wickedness aside. The firm foundation of God is Jesus Christ and how He will reign in His kingdom forever. Christ is the eternal King who Paul refers to all throughout his letters to Timothy. And so this serves as an assurance to Timothy that even if some people swerve from the truth, God will fulfill His purposes. No blasphemers will get in the way of that. And that if you truly confess in the name of Jesus that He is the King, then you will move away from those who deny the truth and their wickedness. The Burj Khalifa in Dubai is the tallest building in the world. 828 meters is how high it stands. And such a massive building needs firm foundations. It needs to be built on something strong 
to keep it standing up. Uh, underneath the building are 192 board holes dug into the ground and they range from 30 to 50 metres deep to make sure that the structure above stays up. But let's say someone starts to take out the foundations from underneath it. Or let's say someone takes out the steel beams to reinforce it and instead replaces it with spaghetti. Uh, there's going to be a disaster if that happens. The building is going to collapse. It's going to be like a giant Jenga tower. That's what happens when people swerve from the truth. When people don't handle the word of God correctly, uh, people's faith will fall over. Quarreling amongst believers, godless chatter, they only depart from the truth and it spreads through the culture of a church. It breaks down that foundation and eventually can lead a church to fall over. As a church who believes in the truth here, uh, which the truth comes from the Word of God, each of us then has a responsibility to correctly handle it. We need to make sure that our foundations are in Christ. Our foundations are in Scripture and in the Word of God. And no amount of quarreling and falsehoods uh, will get in the way of that if our foundations are safe. Well, knowing what the foundation looks like, uh, what does the worker's life look like? Well, in verse 20, we get to see the approved worker of God is to cleanse their life for honorable service. Pick it up with me in verse 20. In a large house, there are articles not only of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay. Some are for special purposes and some for common use. Those who cleanse themselves from the latter will be instruments for special purposes, made wholly useful to the master and prepared to do any good work. Paul gives an illustration here for us to, you, uh, to use the things uh, that God has approved for us to do. Uh, gold and silver, well, they're to be used for special purposes. Uh, they're used to honor someone and they should be saved for the finest of, oca of occasions. Only those that have been cleansed and refined can be used for God's work like gold and silver. I'm not talking about physical washing or a refining fire. Uh, but being cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ and being refined by the Holy Spirit. That's what makes someone holy. That's what makes someone useful for the work of God. But they must be seeking, uh, that person must be seeking themselves to rid themselves of those things which make them dishonorable. And they're said here to be wood and clay. Well, they'd be used for common use uh, or garbage or even excrement. The dishonorable and what they'd be used for. And the worker who is not ashamed of Jesus, the one who is handling the word of truth properly, is one who is of gold and silver. This is what all workers of God should strive towards, to be used for special purposes. And Paul, once again, is this amazing big brother to Timothy, cheering him on saying to be holy, to be pure, and be a vessel of God for His glory. God uses the honorable among the world for His message. Uh, that is those who have cast aside the things that are dishonorable and those who chase the things that are honorable. Now, the truth is an honorable thing. God sets apart uh, His believers for His purposes. And to do a good work of the Father, that's what God wants. He doesn't use those who are going to spread lies, who are going to break the church up. He uses the honorable who will bring him glory. Uh, imagine the queen was going to pop over for a meal. Uh, you would use your nicest plates, wouldn't you? You'd use the finest cutlery that you have. You wouldn't go empty out the dog bowl and serve her up a meal with that. From what I've heard, I'd, she'd probably react in a very polite manner, but deep down inside she'd be thinking, oh my goodness, why have they given me the dog bowl? But for the special moment, you would use the articles with a special purpose, uh, which is how God sees his workers. He has a special purpose for the special articles. Those that have received the special message of truth about Jesus Christ well, they have that special purpose. Are you prepared to be useful for the Lord? God wants to use the 
best for his glory. That doesn't just apply for the paid staff here at church or even the leaders of growth groups or the leaders within the church, but it applies to the whole church. All the people of God should be getting themselves ready for special purposes, cleansing themselves to be ready to do the work of the Lord. God has given us the Holy Spirit and he speaks into our lives to shape us into gold and silver articles. He makes us holy and prepares us for the work of God. But it's also a conscious effort that each one of us needs to make to be repenting of the sins that make us unclean. And it's a continual process that we'll have to do every day. Is your life of gossip getting in the way of the truth? Has your desire for lust made you dishonorable for God? Have you found things to quarrel about within the church which get in the way of sharing the truth? These are just a few examples, but God wants us to rid, us, rid ourselves of those things so that we may be used for the glory of God. And then Paul goes on to tell us exactly what it means to cleanse yourself in verse 22. Flee from evil, uh, flee the evil desires of youth and pursue righteousness, faith, love and peace along with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Desires of youth can be considered as pride, impatience, arrogance, sexual desires. All of those things a young man, one of youth might chase. Uh, so Paul says to flee. Flee those things. And whenever Paul uses flee, it's fleeing from things that will tear down a relationship between God and yourself, God and his people. And here is no different. Uh, When you're fleeing from something, it's often something else uh, that you're looking for. Uh, When refugees flee their country, uh, they're fleeing from their enemies, but pursuing safety. So Paul here is urging Timothy to flee youthful passions but chase safety in God. Pursue safety in God. Timothy is a young man and the world around him would be pulling him in all different directions trying to get him to sin. Flee those desires, Paul is saying. Pursue safety in the Lord. Righteousness, faith, love, peace, they all come from the Lord. And look for those who also call upon the Lord with a pure heart. Pursue fellowship, relationship with other believers who are like-minded. This is what cleansing oneself uh, for honorable use looks like. Uh, By pursuing those things uh, that we've heard of, uh, being around others who seek the Lord, they will lead Timothy to be a great witness and worker of the Lord. Which one of these things do you need help with at the moment? Is it pride, impatience, arrogance, sexual desires? Which of these needs to be taken from your life so that you can live a holy life? And it's a beautiful piece of writing here, a pure heart. A pure heart calls upon the Lord when desires of the youth strike. A pure heart is keen to make peace when quarreling is going on. A pure heart allows the truth to shape them so they won't be caught up in quarreling. It allows them to teach the true words of God in Scripture. And it means they're not resentful when quarreling comes up. And pursue righteousness in the company of others who are like-minded. Because there will be people who seek to build one another up in truth, rather than tear people down in quarrels. Having seen how the worker lives, what should the worker be teaching? Because the God's Uh, approved workers, they will correctly handle the word of truth and they will purify themselves for the service of the Lord. These two things shape the way the worker will teach others. Let's pick it up together in verse 23. I don't have anything to do with foolish and stupid arguments because you know they will produce quarrels. And the Lord's servant must not be quarrelsome but must be kind to everyone, able to teach, not resentful. Opponents must be gently instructed in the hope that God will grant them repentance, leading them to a knowledge of the truth, and that they will come to their senses and escape the trap of the devil who has taken them captive to do his will. Trap of the devil, take them captive? Well, 
it definitely stood out to me when I first read this passage. Uh, and in Paul's letters to Timothy, uh, he has handed Hymenius over to the devil. Whatever he's been teaching about God is considered blaspheming. Uh, that sort of teaching, even those who belong to Jesus, uh, it leads them into the trap of the devil. It leads in the end to people falling away from the truth and gives an opportunity, a foothold for the devil to take them into captivity. Quarreling and not listening to truth are traps of the devil because he is waiting around the corner for anyone who isn't teachable and is quick to get into arguments. But one who has a firm foundation of the knowledge of truth, whom God has given repentance, is granted freedom from those things, freedom from that trap. Because friends, uh, false teaching, it may be attractive, but it's always a trap. It promises something very appealing, but it's not genuine. And that's the trap of the devil. He will promise so much, but it's only a trap to ensnare you and leave you questioning your place with Christ. For those people, we must deal with them gently, reminding them of the truth, reminding them of the truth of Christ, the Word of God, that God might deal with them, with them in a way that helps them to see the gospel and all of its glory again. That they are saved by the blood of Christ, that Christ has defeated death, Christ has defeated Satan, and that uh, through all of that, they will be known by God. It's so easy to get uh, caught into foolish and stupid arguments, isn't it? Uh, in particular, oh, the certain climate we live in, uh, COVID, vaccines, what exactly is God doing in this moment? Uh, it's fine to discuss these things with our communities and all the little intricacies. Uh, is COVID God's judgment? Is the vaccine ethical for Christians? But be careful not to teach something that is false something that might go against the word of truth and cause quarrels and fractures within the church. Our people will leave the church if that's the case. But through gentle instructions, God can lead them to repentance and back to the knowledge of truth. Some of you are probably thinking, well, Timothy was a leader, he was a teacher. I am not a leader or a teacher, so what does this mean for me? Well, it comes down to whose approval are you seeking? Uh, this passage teaches us some amazing things about God. Uh, these are God's people that Paul is speaking to in this passage. Uh, but there is only one person to seek approval from, and that's from our Lord. And the best thing is, He's given us that in Christ. If you believe in your heart, that firm foundation of Jesus' blood shed for you, then the Lord knows you. He knows that you are His. You have His approval. But now, continue to seek that approval in your service. Not all of us will go on to be teachers, but we should be fleeing the youthful desires and pursuing righteousness, faith, love, and peace. A worker of God, a servant of God, seeks these with patience, gentleness in all that they do. All who are saved are to serve the world. A living God. How are we to do that? Well, we can correctly handle the truth. Uh, push your leaders. Uh, this can be applied to all of us. Uh, this passage has a high standard for leaders who are handling the truth. Uh, we're very blessed here at St. John's that there are wise people at the top uh, who hold firmly to the Word of God and want to see it proclaimed truthfully and carefully. So the challenge for the whole church is that should, we should seek to do the same. Uh, if I was not preaching the truth, I would want a message from all of you letting me know about it. And so if each one of us knows our scriptures well, it holds the church on firm foundations that won't be shaken by false teachers or a false gospel. And lastly, what are you pursuing in your life? You should be, uh, we should all be pursuing the unashamed life. We should be pursuing correctly handling the truth, pursuing those great things of God. That is to be an approved worker of God. Uh, 
righteousness, faith, love, peace, pursuing relationships with like-minded people who call on the Lord. And I think, think something we can be doing as a church is be loving peacemakers as well. Uh, be ready to call out your brothers and sisters when they've overstepped the line and started quarrels that could cause fractures. But do it in a gentle manner that seeks to grow them in the knowledge of truth of our Lord and Saviour. Let's pray. Dear loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for the great God that you are. We thank you that we can have your approval through your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, we pray now that you would help us to correctly handle the truth. Help us to cleanse our lives. Help us to teach your word. Lord, we ask that you would be working in all of us that we can go out into the world and work for you for the good of your glory. And we pray this in your son's name. Amen. We belong to the day, to the day that is to come When the night falls away and our Saviour will return For the glory of the King is in our hearts On that day we will be seen for what we are We belong to the day let us journey in the light put on faith put on love as our armor for the fire and the promise of salvation in our lives on that day the proud will fall the faithful run strong as a mighty rock a refuge in the coming wrong The heart of the bride belongs to Jesus, Jesus The earth and its turning stones To marvel at the Son of God And all of the day belongs to Jesus,
Brothers and sisters, thank you so much for joining us here at St. John's in Parramatta uh, this morning, uh, Sunday, August the 1st. As we uh, reflect back on the things we've learned, Evans reminded of something very, very important, that is uh, seeing and finding God's approval. And he's distinguished for us something that's most important, that is that God gives us his approval as justification, as righteousness for salvation. But while we have received that gift of God's approval for salvation, nevertheless, uh, we need to be looking for God's approval in the way that we use our gifts to serve him in this life which he's given to us uh, on earth. And he's brought us back to this, that there is one from whom we should be seeking approval, and that is the Lord Jesus himself. Indeed, that's what it means to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. And so significant in seeking Jesus' approval is that we rightly handle the word of truth, the word of the gospel which has come to us. Maybe during this lockdown time, it's a good idea for us to reassess uh, and to hone our skills in using that word of truth, make sure we're reading it, making sure that we have a book that we're reading about the, the, the word of truth, which will help us and stimulate us in our thinking in that way. Now, I've got two quick notices to draw to your attention, two things to mention to you. Don't forget the lockdown lunch, Monday through Friday during lockdown, one o'clock uh, on Facebook, St. John's Facebook site. And um, then also um, the Share Jesus, getting into better conversations. This is for people to better be able to share Jesus at work. So whilst you're probably not in a position to be able to share Jesus at work at the present time, it's a great opportunity for us to have a think about how we might do that better when we get back into our work situation and our work conversations. Uh, that's on Saturday the 14th of August starting at 10 a.m. It's online uh, and you'll see a link to that in the Cathedral News where you can book into that. Uh, sharing Jesus, getting into better conversations. Now I'm going to close with a word of prayer for us. Please do join me. Father in heaven, thank you for the clear testimony that we have received about our Lord Christ Jesus. We praise you, Father, for you have saved us and called us to a holy calling, not because of our works, but because of your own purpose and grace given to us in Christ Jesus before the ages began, and which has now been manifested through the appearing of our Saviour Christ Jesus who has abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Send us out unashamed to declare your praises through Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. May the Lord be with you always. Amen.